I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but humans are now leading certain types of birds on migration to bring them back. Okay, uh, there was a, there still is a, a large bird in North America called the whooping crane. Anybody heard of this? Okay, Ho whooping cranes are huge. They're absolutely huge, a monstrous bird. And when Europeans first came over to North America, there was a very active flyway from southern Ontario and also the northern Great Lakes states down to Florida, a flyway, meaning those whooping cranes would winter in Florida, fly back, nest up here in spring and summer, and then fly back down for the winter. So they go back and forth twice a year. That flyway of whooping cranes was extirpated means it was eliminated. The term extirpated means a species is eliminated from a certain area, but not from the planet. If it's gone from the planet, you know it's called extinct. So uh, several years ago, a Canadian from uh, Ontario decided that, you know, maybe he could teach uh, some captive birds how to migrate again and try to rehabilitate and build up this, uh, this population of whooping cranes. But it has to start with Canadian geese. Canadian geese are very common. <laughs> They're kind of the opposite of being endangered. You know, like there's too many of them. That's another story. Anyway, it was easy for him to get little or eggs of Canadian geese and then hatch them himself. Now, why he wanted to do that is if you're a bird and you peck your way out of an egg, the first, there's an egg, you know, the first thing you see is, is what? Your mom or dad, exactly. So you will follow that person around for the rest of your life. So this guy's name was Bill Lishman, and so these eggs would hatch, you'd see him start hatching, go like, really, I'm not making this up. And the bird would imprint on him, okay? So all these birds would imprint on him, and then he would uh, accustom them to the sound of an ultralight aircraft engine, because his intention was to lead them down on a migration. And so he'd run around his property with this recording, and these little birds are following him all around. And then he, uh, then he got his ultralight out. The first time he did it, he took off, and they followed him. <coughs> nice V formation. He's the leader. And they'd fly. So he, he could figure out they'd fly him around. Well, after a few years, he decided it was time to um, see if this would really work on a real migration. So the birds are mature. He left uh, Ontario, and the first thing he had to do was fly across Lake Erie. He was very concerned about that because it's about 30, 30 five miles of open water, didn't know if the birds had enough strength to fly all the way across the lake. And whenever you're flying an aircraft, you're always wondering, hmm, if that engine's going to hold out. You know, when you're over water, you're a little more concerned, right? But anyway, it all worked. They flew across Lake Erie. It was really funny. This is the first time migrating birds had to go through immigration. <laughs> the U.S. immigration was waiting for them over here in New York. Anyhow, they kept flying, and a guy said down in Virginia here that he had room if he could bring the birds down, and he did it. So it was the first time uh, humans ever led a migration of birds uh, for the winter. Then they, were, they drove down next spring to fly them back, but when they got there, they were all gone. His wife called and said, yeah, because they're here. <laughs> They'd flown back on their own. So it seems like they only have to fly down the path one time. They figure it out. They know how to get back. Now, like I say, Canadian geese were not the bird that they were um, really concerned about. Years later, let's fast forward, they got some whooping crane eggs. And now they're teamed up with a lot of people from the United States. And they, they're up in southern Wisconsin where they're going to raise these. So birds hatch out. They imprint again. They teach these birds to follow an ultralight and they lead them on the first migration. And this will be the first time you've seen whooping cranes going down from Wisconsin to Florida for probably 100 years. It but will. they're following an ultralight aircraft. It will be. You know, it was. This happened. It was. Now, I'm slowly getting back to this convective thing. Uh, so they lead them down there. It took something like 45 days because the birds were really skittish. They'd get, they'd get flying over a big interstate highway. They wouldn't fly over it turn back. So it was a very, very difficult operation. By the way, this is called Operation Migration. They have a website today. It's a very, very interesting group. Anyhow, they get the group down there. What I'm really getting at here is that, again, they were going to fly them back the next year. They were already back in Wisconsin. They figured out how to fly back. So every year, they're leading another group down to try to build up this population. Now, I think they might be up over 100 by now. Here's the deal. When they were flying behind an ultralight aircraft, the ultralight aircraft's flying at the same altitude. So these birds are like, you know, flying at the same altitude. Turns out that's not the way whooping cranes migrate. Whooping cranes migrate 
just like gliders are looking for thermals, and they've watched them do this. So what'll happen is the the, um, the birds will take off and they'll look for a thermal. They'll get in a thermal, they'll get as high as they can, circling around, thermal's gone, they start gliding back to the north. And they're looking around for another thermal, they find that and go. So it's not just a steady altitude. They look for thermals, get a free ride, get another free ride to glide. These birds, you know, I mean, that, that's a really smart way to conserve energy. So it's very tough on these birds to fly down right behind an ultralight at the same altitude. It's not the way they're designed because you can imagine the energy they expend and that's why it takes them so many days. I can't tell you how many days it takes them to migrate back on their own, but it's much fewer days, I know that, than when they follow one of these um, ultralights now. So anyhow, they've been able to rehabilitate to a point now what we call the eastern flyway of the whooping crane. Now there's a central flyway that there's still a few birds left going up from the Canadian Arctic down to the Texas Gulf Coast. Uh, they're also using uh, ultralight aircraft to now rehabilitate whooping cranes in Russia. So this, is, this idea is catching on. So anyway, idea there is birds also use convective activity like gliders to try to gain altitude.